So we want to talk about what another big news this week is the oh. NHS. Yeah. Well, well, let's have a look at this video and then let's fill in the background. Whatever it needs, whatever it costs, we stand behind our NHS. The NHS has saved my life, no question. It's hard to find words to express my debt. You are the front line in this war against this virus and we all pay tribute to you. Pay tribute, but not prepared to pay more than 1%. There's anger right across the NHS today, especially among families who've lost relatives on the front line. Amita Ruplal worked on a respiratory ward in Birmingham. She died in January. Her sister, who also works for the NHS, says the government must do more. Amita paid the ultimate price, which was her life. And I think it's a real insult because the nurses that are working there now are putting themselves at risk and I just feel like it's rubbing salt in the wound really. Good afternoon Health Secretary. Um, there are still 12,000 people being treated for Covid in hospital. Uh, how hard did you fight for a more generous pay offer for those who are looking after them and how hard are you prepared to continue to fight for those NHS workers? Well Libby as you know I am a huge admirer of all those who've worked in the NHS during this pandemic and done so much. And I'm very pleased that the NHS staff have been uh, carved out of the pay freeze. Um, and we do have uh, uh, issues of the affordability uh, because of the consequences of the pandemic on the public finances. The cost of the 1% pay rise is estimated to be £500 million. It's a fraction of the £400 billion pledged so far in response to the Covid pandemic, of which £37 billion is being spent on test and trace and more than £50 billion on the furlough scheme. The Royal College of Nursing has set up a strike fund with this hard-hitting poster. But it's not just NHS staff who say the government's misjudged the mood. Tory MPs, including one former minister, are worried too. This is economically uh, illiterate uh, as a policy because it's going to push staff uh, who need to be rewarded at a time when they've been working really hard away from the NHS. Uh, and we need to have a, a very quick rethink because both on a moral and an economic level, um, the NHS needs to be supported at this time and the staff need to receive a, pro a proper pay settlement and pay increase. This nursing union official says many are prepared to swap the front line for the picket line. Anger leads to passion and passion leads to action. And I feel like there is going to be a lot of action in the weeks to come. Whether or not that gives ministers pause for thought remains to be seen. Yeah. Mm. Well, there you go. What can you say other than, yeah. They, they are getting a 1% pay rise. So here we go. Let's break this down. I'm not going to bring politics into this. I'm just talking about common sense. You have all spent the last year doing these intermittent campaigns where you'll be clapping the NHS to say thank you very much. Well, you know what? Those claps, yeah, they'd rather have a pay rise. I hate to break it to you, but they'd rather have a pay rise so they can pay the bills so that when this world comes back to normal, and it will later this year or really next, there'll be a point where you just are out with your mates in a pub, you're having a drink, you're doing whatever in a restaurant, or you, you're you somewhere doing something and you will go, it's wow, yeah, maybe in Satan's Hollow in Manchester or Fab Cafe mm. on Portland Street in Manchester, not a plug in any way. Um, you could you will then go, oh, do you remember the hardship now? Oh, it seems so far away now. Yeah, these guys got you there. These guys got you yeah. over the hurdle. They got you to the final furlough. They did all that. You were doing these, oh, clap the NHS. No, no, fuck off with your claps. Fuck your claps. Unless your claps, unless you want to bring in an exchange where we can ex exchange claps for money, you know. 10,000 claps equals five US dollars or something. Just to you know. this, just so how sickening it is, I think, is the people who say, oh, it's all a hoax, all of it, say, oh, well, oh. The, the NHS, the nurses, were just doing the job. 
End of story. Yeah, okay, I know. Well, they, they're the worst of us, these guys. The guys that attack the NHS and go, the, the places are half empty. They're, yeah. just, they're just making it up yeah. and all that. Well, they can go fuck themselves as well. So while we're on this chain, you can probably tell I've started doing this, the, this show tonight. And I'm in a pretty bad mood. So I thought, right, let's just... Shoot everybody down, you know. Let's let's take care of all these problems that we've got. But but this about the NHS wouldn't be, it would be bad under normal circumstances. However, here's the problem that I've got. We are dealing with this this week, and at the moment there is an investigation into Boris Johnson and his fiance Carrie Simmons. And the fact that they want to spend £150,000 of the taxpayer money on doing up the flat above 11 Downing Street where they live. Now, uh, the the worst part of this is that £50,000 of that is earmarked for wallpaper that is gold-plated. So, 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 pardon? Gold leaf. Gold leaf, sorry. Yeah, gold leaf, yeah. So you have got a situation where in one week, this government, this government that you all think is a compare, is a considerate, compassionate, conservative uh, government, yeah, uh, wants to give the NHS a 1% pay rise and would equally like gold leafed wallpaper. And that sums the government up for me. It sums them up, you know, charlatans and blah, blah, blah. The backhanders that's gone on, hopefully, hopefully next year there will be some sort of proper investigation to what has gone on. I mean, we use the hashtag Circoland uh, going on on our Twitter account, which reminds me, please tell your friends and join Twitter if you would, M underscore candidates, and tell other people to subscribe to this channel. It'd be wonderful if you did. We'll have some graphics flying up in the next few weeks. But the point is, it's corrupt government. And if you look back on the history of every Tory government, by the end of the government, there are always corruption to a level always. which they just couldn't always. handle anymore. Now, I'm, I'm shocked at how corrupt this is already. Oh, where, they where, started where we, out. How are we going, Mike? No, they started out corrupt, and they, they're they amping it up and amping it up. I mean, uh, when you are a leader, there are certain things that should be keeping you awake at night. And those things are the welfare of the people under your control, command, you know. The citizens of the United Kingdom should be, their welfare should be keeping Boris Johnson awake at night. Because that's what a good leader does. A good leader cares about everybody under under him. He, he wants to look after them. That's the whole point. So let's just say that I'm wrong and you shouldn't have a left wing the situation it should be right it should be conservative and i'm wrong well fine well their version of this is that you should be a compassionate conservative that's been educated above the means of normal people and wants to share that education to for the benefit of all that is the literally the definition of being a a so disraeli one uh, one, one nation, nation conservative yeah. and he is trying to pretend he's that, and he's not. He's after getting gold leaf wallpaper on his flat so he can fuck his missus. Thank you for watching. I'm impressed. You've passed the IQ test and got this far, so let's press that button to do the last thing that helps us. It's got subscribe on it, you can't miss it, and please ring the bell for notifications of future videos.